You want to shoot the shit? Shove a Uzi up your ass. We got these fucking schoolies puffing Lucy's cutting class. I got these Russian beauties like Nikita Denise taking the penis to teeth while I'm squeezing their cheeks. I ain't conceited. I ain't listened to Behemoth in weeks. And if these greedy little weasels wasn't greasy, they'd squeak. If they was birds, they would squawk. If they was dogs, they'd be bitch. We'd all be falling for it. All of them get caught in this shit. Welcome along to the Guy and Harley podcast. My name's Harley Neville. And I'm Guy Pigton. And that was Giant Gorilla Dog Thing. What the hell are they talking about? Banging groupies, presumably. Isn't that what most great rap music's about? Why, why hasn't he listened to... Why, he hasn't listened to Behemoth of Weeks. Yeah. I, do, I'm, I just assumed that was a shout-out to one of his mates. Their band. All oh, right. That's okay. what I figured it was. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah. Yeah. That was how I took that. So, we are back in the same country again, uh, which is nice. It's always a treat. Um, after I came back from L.A., you... Uh, I sorry, in, before I went to L.A., before I came back from L.A., I think, you yeah. went to London. I was in London. Merry old London. I'm, I'm back now. Uh, I was only over there very briefly for my uncle's memorial, um, and uh, I spent uh, 10 days in London, which is absolutely not enough time and makes no sense to do under unless you're under extreme circumstances which of course i was but uh i got over the jet jet lag basically um two days uh no well really one i had one day of no jet lag Mm. every other day falling asleep at or wanting to fall asleep at like seven eight o'clock in the uh, night waking up at 5 a.m you know and feeling also just not amazing because that is what jet lag is like so uh if you're planning to go to europe don't make it a 10-day trip well that's lunacy it's funny you should mention that because i was planning a 10-day trip to europe planning was, a 10-day trip to germany i was thinking about going uh next month um you know dream scenario is going with you um but we have been accepted into a festival that we can't name yet um i don't think it's in germany though and it's going to be the world premiere of older which is quite a big deal really after six years of making it and so it'll be the first time it's going to be screened in front of a public audience Mm. and it would be very cool to attend that um however i did contact the festival and asked them if they had uh, any sort of incentives any reasons why we might you know (laughs) go go across the globe and basically the answer is no not really um (laughs) so they had um they had uh they would give us two nights accommodation two two nights accommodation okay but back up so i when you told me about this yeah i was like you said accommodation yeah, and in my head, I was like, "Sweet accommodation for the duration, duration of the, of the festival." The festival. Yeah. Two nights. That's not at all what the what the text said. The text said directly what it was, which was that we get two nights, and when I say we, I mean we get to share a room for two nights and a bed. No, well, it's a double room, so so I assume we would be able to get two single beds, like in LA. Remember in LA? Yeah. See, that was like a good seven or... I mean, it must have been like a seven or eight day trip, right? But it doesn't yep. feel like it was that long that we were sharing a room, not whacking off and stuff. I don't feel like I remember it being... A problem for you. Yeah. Was, <laughs> a problem for that. your masturbatory... <laughs> yeah. Habits. <laughs> um, it's and because there was a lot of things going on. Yeah, it was just some... At the end of the day, you were just too Tired. exhausted. Too exhausted for yeah, masturbating. A lot of be- it was also like... i tell you why. It's because we drank ridiculous amounts of beers every single day mm, if mm. we didn't have the one beer killer. or a margarita yeah in the day it wasn't a day there was one event which was literally breakfast and beer and they gave us beer to drink for breakfast at this networking event at the festival which is really weird well i was cool with it i mean it was fine but it's definitely a it, weird thing to I be just like, come to breakfast and drink this beer well the thing is if you're going to put on some beers in the morning drink a coffee you gotta you gotta you gotta line up the shots next you know, you got to go balls deep or don't do it at all. Mm. So, uh, but anyway, we um, shared a hotel room then. Um, and so we could do that again because basically what they said is that we get a queen room between us, like a shared room between us for two nights, mm. or we can get two single rooms each for one night. Two single rooms for 
one night each. That's it. So we get two nights deal. total. So 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 well, I mean, the deal is that you get a room to yourself. You don't have to share it with me. Yeah. But we get two, uh, one shared room for two nights or two single rooms for one night each. Um, so we would basically just have to go halves in the expense of having single rooms for the rest of the time. I have a you know sinking. we'd take the two we'd take the two nights as a shared room and then the rest of the time go into singles presumably, uh, yeah. and just go halves in that expense. Yeah, I have a sinking feeling that they haven't put much priority on our film. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's that. I think it's they they just literally don't have any money. It's just a, a small festival. You know, I just don't think they have any money for that um, sort of thing. So they'd say they'd pay for that and also for um, uh, the train, train from Munich um, to the to where the festival is. Um, but I went and had a look at flights the other day, and realistically, nah, I just don't see it happening. And it's going to be th- did you? it's going to be thirty one hours to get there and yep. twenty six hours to get back. Yeah, uh, the I've festival enjoyed those trips recently as well. The yeah. fe- the festival's only uh, the festival is uh, I think about a week, and mm. so we would be it would be a ten day trip to Europe with thirty hours to travel each way plus the train, you know mm. plus the train. So it's not like you get off and you're in the place where you want to be. You've yeah. then got to catch a train, um, and then you get there. You're spending euros and you're um, accommodating yourself. You know, for this whole time and everything you're eating, everything and all that stuff, right? So it's just going to be quite expensive, uh, and quite soon after Christmas, and mm. uh, quite not very long after LA, which I'm still financially recovering from, and which also kind of took away the enthusiasm for international travel right this very moment. I'm not like, you know, like I ha- it's not like I haven't been somewhere. I've been to freaking, I've been to the other, I was at the other side of the world two weeks ago. You know, yeah. I've got it out of my system. That's the thing about international travel. I feel like it's it's like a health bar. So once you 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 go on a big international trip, your health bar is depleted. Yeah. And you don't feel like you want to do that again right away. Well, and yeah, yeah, my my health bar was depleted from the first time I went to London still. Yeah. And I found that this <laughs> this uh trip to London was definitely a bit worse, yeah. but I also did stop uh, I did the longest trip you could possibly do. The longest plane ride currently uh, is a 17-hour trip to Dubai. And right. so I did that. Yeah. And uh, 12 hours, is, is to me, is, is kind of cool. 12 to 14, that's cool. Um, but that's really as far as you want to take it. When you start getting into that 16, 17 hours, mm. you're suddenly like, man, I've been here a really long time. Well, I mean, I was jet-lagged and I only went to LA. It still affected my sleep. So seventeen hours away, it's still other side of the your, world. Your twelve-hour sleep cycle. Uh, I'll have you know, guy, that if I go to bed at about midnight here in New Zealand, that's uh, about three a.m. in LA before I'm even feeling tired. But of course, I've got shit to do in the morning, and it's difficult to go to bed early. Uh, so I did try, I did try, but I had a lot of trouble getting asleep, particularly for the majority of my, or the first half of my trip, or well, definitely the first half of my trip. Um, so yeah, take that. <laughs> um so you so yes anyway i don't know that either of us are really going to make it uh what do you think well i mean the plot, it is the world premiere it will be very cool the plot thickens a little bit for me because uh i originally was planning to have surgery in two weeks time mm. and i've kind of structured my sort of plans life ar- around this concept that i would be having surgery very soon mm. Um, and in fact, it's actually going to create a big problem when I, when I do need to have surgery now, if it's not around this sort of Christmas New Year's period. Yeah, because that's what you're planning for. Um, and I do have some sort of technical time off. Um, I am meant to be doing things, uh, uh, you know, in my teaching job, but I'm not teaching anyone. So there is this sort of so I originally and also there was a reason to sort of head over um for my girlfriend's uh uh to see her girlfriend's family who have a um birthday coming up I believe um but I said sort of no to all that originally thinking that look it's just you know I'm going to be I'm just going to have hip surgery I can't sit on a plane for 30 hours very easily yeah um and you know it's you know financially not really going to work for me um, but now that the surgery is thrown into question mm. of when that might be happening, it might actually be the only time I am free to take such a trip. Right. 
Uh, and it's also possible... It's looking like, what, your surgery's not happening when you thought it was going to Exactly. There's no current time of it being booked in. There's no date set. Um, so I'm kind of in the wilderness there. Yeah. Uh, and because of that, that means that this time at the start of the year is the, so- the only sort of real gap, you might say, um, where it might be feasible to go over and also, and this is the biggie, because really we're talking about expenses here. That's the problem. It's mm. not, I mean, you know, the time off work is a problem, but also just the cost of it is a problem. Yeah. But if the cost can be mitigated by my girlfriend's family, suddenly that's even more of a reason to do it. Well, because you can somehow stay with them or something So essentially like that. we I mean, go, there from for Germany. A, go there for a while and yeah. then go over to Germany Everywhere in Europe is close. Yeah. So you just, it's just the. What? So now the whole family's going. Well. I mean, it makes sense, right? It's the world premiere. Get the whole gang along. You, you mean me and my girlfriend? Well, would her fam? Well, you're saying you're talking about somehow her family mitigating the cost for you. Yeah. Presumably, so you mean a, that you have to stay with them. Yeah. Or something like that. That's right. So they pay for us to go over. So we go to that family event, but uh, then I also soiree my uh, way. Oh, so you save money on the flights. Yeah. Save money on the flights. Right. 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 And then, yeah. you, and then you bring the missus and yeah. go halves with her in the accommodation. Yeah, well... Uh, Maybe not. Well, I don't know. It's, I don't know if I'd want to be there for more than two days. I've never been to Germany. Well, the festival's more than two days, but I guess you'd want to. You'd have to figure out what two days... Well, what day our film is actually screening. Otherwise, you might miss it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. But to be honest, with my current financial situation uh, and heading into Christmas, uh, you know, I'd want to buy the tickets pretty soon. And I just don't see it happening at the moment, sadly. Yeah, I would also agree with that mm. as a likely outcome. Mm. But mm. I will also say that, um, you know, these things, uh, you know, you never know when your next festival is going to be. Well, that's the thing. you got to seize life by the horns and, you know. You know, my, our last festival was 2015, I believe. Well, probably for you, not for me, mate. Um, I went to 2014. I went to no. I went to um, Scream Fest in 2016 with no caller ID. Oh yeah, I forgot, uh, about, that. And <laughs> I forgot then, about that. Yeah, and then also the jammy bastard. <laughs> also, uh, that cost me a lot of money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there was no jam. Um, uh, but also, I went to um, a night of horror as a judge. Now it's not quite the same thing, but I was doing the festival experience, and then obviously working for the, the film festival here in Auckland as well. So. You know, I feel like I've had quite a lot of festival experiences uh, lately. Not all of them with my project specifically, but yeah, still. Mm. yeah. Well, yeah. It's, so it's been four year, four years for me. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't mind. I would not mind. But yeah, like I don't know. It's just expensive, man. We 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 just just really hoping for that indie darling film. That yeah, indie darling that everyone just goes. We love the film. We want a love festival. Yes, we'll pay your flights. Yes, we'll pay your accommodation. Yes, we'll pay for your food. Because we love your film so much. Mm. And it's just magical. And we just can't. Well, we need to get big into, into a bigger, bigger festival. That's the oh, issue. Well, though, isn't it? No, We're we, not in a big enough festival. And We're make, in a small time festival. And make a better film, it's, arguably. Well, that well, I mean, a better film, I guess, might get into more festivals. So yeah. I guess so. But we haven't passed all the deadlines and all the festivals just yet. No, we haven't. You know, like, we might still get selected into a whole bunch of them. We don't know yet. They haven't announced yeah. yet. Although, big news, Harley. What? And I'm sorry to, to have to let you know. Yeah. But we didn't get into Sundance. Oh. That is a true shock to me. <laughs> a true shock. <laughs> uh, I really thought that Sundance was... Was the one. Was the one. I really thought... Indie Darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do think we should probably just mention the name of the place, the one that we did get into. Just for the fifty one fifty, the sexy one sixty, yeah, uh, because it's called Snow Dance, yeah, which is the poor man's knockoff, presumably, <laughs> presumably of Sundance, you know, and well, it's set in the mountains, which will be lovely, the mountains of Germany. Well, to be fair, the poor man up there in the in the bloody eagle's nest, I'll be there. The poor man's Sundance is yeah. Slam Dance, right? Which we also didn't get into. Uh, okay, yeah. So the so now the poor man's Slam Dance mm. could be Snow Snow Dance, dance yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it does look good though to have an official selection. It does. It's a good start. 
It's a good start. Good start. It's a bit of a shame that the world premiere of this film that we've been working on for six years is going to be in a small town in Germany as part of an independent festival, and we probably won't be in attendance. And presumably it'll have subtitles? I guess they won't dub it. Yeah, it'll just probably have some subtitles. Some subtitles, yeah. But the Eng- the Germans speak um, good English anyway, because yeah. c- they lost the fucking war. <laughs> so... Shit, that we're really endearing ourselves to, <laughs> to this festival if they ever listen to this. Well, I am very grateful to be a part of it. <laughs> yes, well, the other thing that we have to worry about now also is the deliverables for that festival, which yeah. I am a little bit worried about. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it's when is it? January 25th? Yes. Yeah, so I have to sort of figure out how to make those. And we haven't quite finished the film, apparently. Right, yeah. Wow, it's good. You've got a month. No worries. Two months, really. Wow, probably five weeks. Well, I guess. I uh, mean, today is today. It. Today is the eighth. Oh yeah. boy. Yep. So. Oh boy. <laughs> um. Now we better. I guess we'd better kind of pick up from you know L.A. Right? Because last time we spoke was in L.A. By the way, did you listen to that episode in L.A.? No. You should really give the intro and outro a hoon. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Genius stuff. Genius. The analog intro and outro. Genius. Yes, my girlfriend quite liked that, actually. Yeah. She was laughing. I cut them out, actually. I cut them out for reuse in the future. <laughs> I'm just going to put them in sometimes. Um, uh, so anyway, we better pick up where we left off, which is that we were in LA, or I was in LA, for Operation Get Laid in LA, which is the strategic code name uh, for... The, our plan to sell older our second feature film and when uh, we, where we left off I was only it was only my second night there or something like that um, I hadn't really started my meetings properly I'd missed an important meeting with um, Indy Wrights uh, the one person we really wanted to talk to at the time yeah um, we missed a meeting with them um, but I did have another meeting that went well and then the next day I was going to go and make up for that uh, fuck up and also have a whole bunch of other meetings that I'd lined up uh, with the goal of being three goals, three goals. One of them is the sales and distribution of our second feature film, Older, which is completed, more or less. Um, the other is some po- finding some post-production money for Glimpses, the documentary that guy, the medical documentary that Guy's been working on in London. And the third uh, goal of this trip was to get... 100,000 US dollars or whatever we can get um, to shoot our third feature film, a indie horror called The Family. So those are my three three goals. And so I went along, I had all those meetings, uh, went really well, pretty much more or less everybody was keen. Uh, all the uh, meetings were pretty positive, everyone was keen. Uh, and now we're working through all the offers and figuring out who's going to give us the best deal and what we should sign and what we shouldn't. But it's tough because um, neither of us are businessmen or lawyers. Yes, it's a very difficult proposition because, you know, uh, burn me once, shame on me. Burn me twice, well, you there's just, just no shame in me anymore. You, just, you don't burn me twice. You just don't shame, you don't, you don't shame them. You don't burn me twice. Don't, don't burn it. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, because basically, you know, uh, you know, with a zombie film, you know, we were burned and we need to take the lessons of the zombie film mm. and apply it to how we're selling how we negotiate this next deal and also you know it's very important to say too that the world of distribution is changing it's in flux at the moment and no have you, one have you people been keeping up with the stripper <laughs> <laughs> which is a distribution aggregator which uh, basically catastrophically fell over recently and all the people that had films on it yeah were sort of not aware that all the money that was going to distribute, which is then redistributed to the films that they represent, was not going to them. Mm. And now they're having all this trouble uh, kind of separating themselves. So some of these films are still up and available on Amazon or whatever um, platform that they got sold onto by distributor. Then distributor went out of business, but these films are still up there. People are still watching them. Money's still being made by someone, but it's not necessarily going... We don't know. Well, I don't know exactly where it's going. Well, it's, it's basically going to 
the insolvency and bankruptcy of uh distributor right yeah uh at the moment yeah. um, and and so so we got to be careful not to go signing up with the next distributor as well we do have to because you know in fact distributor seemed like the answer for us in a, in a way yeah um a, a distribution aggregator which is someone that basically takes your film does all the conversions they have a relationship with itunes netflix google mm, amazon. amazon prime like all those people where they have a relationship with those people so because you can't directly submit to those people mm. uh well apart from amazon the, the rest you can't and so essentially you go through them they charge you a fee it goes up online um through them all the money that comes back goes through them back to you and they take you know a cut or they take a cut off the top at the beginning plus they but the shit thing about their model was they also charge you a big hit up front yeah so like a fee up front for getting it onto itunes or onto whatever and they charge per platform i think yeah they yeah. Did, yeah so you had to pay like yeah i want it on itunes and netflix and they'll go cool well that's three grand uh and they would take their money out of that and then yeah. you would get 20 percent of whatever it made on those places but you still had to invest money so the new model is that, except for without having to pay that fee up front. And basically these companies take it to these places, get them up there, take a cut. And it's in their best interest long term to have a thousand films that they're taking 20% of. Um, even if each film's only making a little bit of money, they're getting 20% of all of them. And it's a passive income for a long time or the duration of the contract. Yeah. Um, and so, so we've got to figure out, you know, do we want that model or do we go for a more traditional sales agent model, which is the same model that burned us last time but is also like it has a wider scope for things like maybe getting into theaters and stuff like that if our film you know were to ever get into theaters and the, the, that's the problem is that you know you're presented these options and none of them really seem ideal um but also they also tell you all the right things yeah they go, oh your film was amazing we loved it oh man that was the best film of the afm you know they was... really know how to suck us off yeah they really tell us what to hear yes there's a possibility for us to um co-develop um future projects to co-produce we have an equity line and we can um, co-produce future projects if if the relationship goes that way you know oh okay that's a nice wee carrot to dangle um and then uh uh, they they very complimentary on the on the on the film and on the work that was put into it and so on, but not without um, some uh, anchors in reality. You know, like they don't just say like the film's great, I love it. They're like they do have some feedback on what they loved about it and stuff, which does suggest they did actually watch it. Yeah. Um, but yes, they they obviously they know to go through the film, find the bits they like, and tell us about the bits they like and how much potential it's got, so that we sign the line with them. Handsome stars. Handsome stars. That was literally beautiful, what they said. Handsome. They said the the cast was uh, very beautiful. Uh, of course, they're talking about Guy Pigden. Yeah. Writer, director, lead actor. Mm, mm. Um, so I immediately suggested we side with them. Yeah. Harley said, "Hey, let's just take a step back and think about this for a voice, bit longer. You know, let's, let's the voice of reason prevail." And I said, "Yeah, but they said that I was handsome." Yeah. Um, well, no one's more of a sucker for a compliment than me, so I understand, <laughs> mate. I understand. Um, so, yeah, so we, we, we have a lot of decisions to make, and the problem is uh, we also need lawyers. Lawyers need to look at these things. Well, luckily, there's many lawyers amongst the sexy 160, so if you guys are out there listening and you're a lawyer, as an a, entertainment an lawyer, ed- specifically, <laughs> preferably, the- preferably LA-based, and so you understand the local contract kind of laws and how it all works over there with the entertainment contracts, if that's you, uh, let us know. Yeah, specifically Get in the, touch. the niche lawyer, the entertainment lawyer. Mm. Um, and so that's a problem and also we need or we may need what's known as errors and omissions insurance which is a uh, basically a, a sort of a, a legal document which shows that you have all the i's and t's dotted and crossed, crossed. Um, and uh, what it basically means is that if anyone sees the film and goes hey uh, i resent uh, hey i've got a problem with this bit of the film and I'm going to sue you for millions of dollars. What do you think about that? You go, ha ha, take this errors and omissions insurance, buddy, and sue away. Yeah. Because then, we're then, all protected. We're safe as houses. So the insurance company gets sued or has to pay that fee. Or has uh, to For deal our with omission, the, as long as they signed off on it and signed yeah. the contract with us. Yeah. So, but the thing is, is again, it's a bit of a scam, really. Oh, it's you, you complete go, nonsense. You go through all the work to prove that you own all the rights in it. So once you've done that, 
why bother then getting the insurance? Because you know Absolutely. you've got all the rights in it. So yeah. why you're, so you're, no one you're can ever them, come and sue you? You're giving them five thousand dollars though to say or whatever it costs to say no one's going to sue you to say to say that if someone sues you, we will um, we will pay it. But we're not going to sign you until you prove to us that you own all the rights. And that so, you can't be sued. And, and that you can't be sued. Exactly. <laughs> and when so, we're very, very confident that you can't be sued... Then we'll let we you pay will, us. We will charge you $5,000 for this. Yes, exactly. Um, so, but you, you know, can't... You, the thing is, it's, you, we could prove that we own all the rights, right? And go, cool, we don't really need the insurance, actually. But the obviously the companies, the sales companies and so on, won't take the film without that insurance because then it covers their asses. Yes. So you've got to get it. So if you want to get into a fucking good scam, get into the E&O insurance game. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like all you're doing is charging people five grand for them to organize their own shit, prove to you they own it, and then you're taking the small risk that you and them have somehow missed uh, a contract, you know, a contract, or something like that, and that that particular individual whose contract you happen to miss sees the film and then decides to go into litigation. I think litigation is the right word. Yeah, that's correct. I'm a lawyer, so it's all kind of ridiculous. Uh, and like, it, yeah, it, sure, it make like what? Why does E and O exist? Well, it kind of exists at, at the beginning for big films. When someone sees, uh, you know, Will Smith, the Gemini man, uh, being a clone of himself, and they're sitting there and they go, hang on a second, I sent a script into Sony Pictures 10 years ago called uh, The Sagittarius Man. The Aquarius Man. The Aquarius Man. And the Aquarius Man was basically this thing, and I'm going to sue your ass. Like, no one's going to watch the plot to older and go, wait a second, I sent the script into Pigville Productions five years ago yeah and i'm gonna sue your ass yeah especially because i i wrote this script more than five years ago yeah and also i mean <laughs> it would only be the people the creators of beyond of before sunset <laughs> that's what it would only be them that was that was getting in touch that would only so that, yeah. that would be only it would only be richard linklater that would hit me up yeah and he's unlikely to see it and he's probably not going to watch this one so yeah. i'm safe so it's all good <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we're we're dealing with that, and we're dealing with the uh, the horror known as deliverables. Mm. And uh, you know, for those of you that don't know, deliverables are what you have to deliver to finish the film. So E and O insurance is part of that, but it's also the film in like all these different formats with uh, you know a dialogue list or textless elements textless elements and which is basically your visual effects but say there was some text on the screen so you just show you just instead send that bit where the text would be on screen yeah but it's the same sh shot that instead of saying director guy picked in it's just the same shot but it doesn't say director guy picked in just says and then they nothing. can they so can, they can, they can put other things on it or i guess yeah so what would that be in uh spanish charlie director guy picked in uh uh L. <laughs> L. L director. L. L. Uh, director. Uh, I don't. I can't remember uh, what the word is for director. Cool. Well, I don't, a I don't, wealth of knowledge. I don't really speak Spanish. No, I think it might be just director, right? But with an accent. Yeah. That's what half of Spanish is. It's That's just why the same. you were able to El learn director. it. El director. Exactly. It's, it's the same. <laughs> well, it, yeah, yeah. It's, this, it's the same language, just with a silly accent. That's how you That's were how able I to master That's it. That's how I learned Spanish. <laughs> and then forget it subsequently. Yeah. I mean, I know that producer is um, productor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. there you go. So, yeah. So, if essentially, we have to make all these things. Now, normally what happens is you go to a post-production house. And you go, cool. Um, here's all this horrible shit. Uh, can you make that? And they go, yeah, of course we can make that, sir. Um, that'll be, you know, $10,000. And you go, thank you. I'm so glad I don't have to do that. This $10,000 seems like absolutely nothing to me right now. Yeah. And I'm so glad that I'm giving this $10,000. Mm. It seems like the best money I ever spent on this production is this $10,000 right now. And my job is to block Guy's dreams and and just encourage him one small piece at a time to just accept that we're not spending that $10,000 and he just does all that work yeah. over the next several months. Which is what I had to do with, old, with, with uh, the, zombie the zombie film, holocaust. Which I will say, 
People should go out and watch I Survived a Zombie Holocaust because... I made all the deliverables for it. Guy made all the deliverables, but also because next year it runs out, we think it runs out its contract in 2020. S- still unverified. Well, yeah, we don't really know, but if, you know, like it's on Showtime right now, but I suspect that that runs out in 2020 after a five-year contract. So what that means is if you want to go out and watch it, who knows what's going to happen next year, how it's going to be available next year. But at the moment, it's widely available. So go to iTunes, go to um, Amazon, go to Xbox and MGO and PlayStation. And mm, is it on Hulu? Yep. I think it is on Hulu. Believe it is. Uh, and and iTunes and all, and um, Showtime and all of that stuff. And go and watch it this year. I survived a zombie holocaust because who knows where it'll be next year. Yeah, what we kind of need to do is get our American spies to do a little bit of research on where it is still playing, well, if it is still playing. Well, mate, uh, actually, we don't really need them that much because you can just go to the trailer on YouTube. Um, I Survived a Zombie Holocaust trailer on YouTube, and you find the official one from the Pigville channel, and um, scroll down to the description, and you'll see all the links there, of various places you can buy it. And um, But if you click through... And if you click on them they'll be able to tell you whether or not they're still functional or not. You know, a bunch mm. of them, prob- some of them probably won't be, I guess. Um, like, I remember the warehouse took it off. Um, bastards. The, those bastards. But to be fair, last time I saw it at the warehouse... Was it the bargain it, bin? It was, no, it wasn't even in the bargain bin. I, like, <laughs> it said they had one copy in the bargain bin somewhere, and I, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, and I, well, maybe we did buy it, actually. No, we d- I think we got two copies for 10 bucks. When you, when you know Five, something... Four years ago. When something gets the end of its shelf life, it's literally ours started at the end of its shelf life <laughs> it would seem i sold more i made more D, i made more money selling dvds to the sexy 160 podcast listeners selling signed dvds than i made from my actual check from the production but this is a very important point because basically what you're alluding to with that is <laughs> how distribution should and may be changing and how we should be changing and monetizing our distribution yeah uh where we do cut out the middleman like why did for example why back in the day did you need all these things like why did you need a distributor well part of it is the connections and stuff that they have that's absolutely correct but but a lot of it was the sort of okay so cool well we can't make a dvd a dvd is a is a magical thing that gets made at a factory somewhere and it's very difficult to achieve and how do you print things oh, it's, a, it's a magical thing it's very difficult to do you can't do it you the commoner can't do it only us with our resources and contacts can make these things um but now it's like how do you make a dvd well you make it on your computer in in, in 10 minutes mm. oh wait wait a second but but what about the printing of it well you have a laser printer thing that does it automatically you put it on your thing okay so uh, that costs you know five dollars to do and yet these all these places to charge fifteen twenty. so suddenly okay maybe we should be distributing our own dvds and and it, this kind of extends outward because it's like, well, how are people getting this? Well, they're getting it on the internet. Well, how do we upload it to the internet? Well, well all these streaming platforms that we're connected to. Yeah, well, if we had, um, if we owned, if we had I Survived a Zombie Holocaust, I Survived a Zombie Holocaust is on YouTube anyway. It's on YouTube and it keeps getting viewed by hundreds of thousands of people. Now, if it's available there anyway, imagine how good that would be if we had it uploaded to our YouTube channel and we had millions of views on our feature film on a monetized um, platform because we have monetized our Pigville Productions YouTube channel so we could have it on our YouTube channel with ads at the beginning middle and end mm-hmm. and we could be making some money off of that film as the creators of it and having hundreds of thousands of views or millions of views and lots of comments and all of that stuff but we can't do that because we don't own the rights to it and yes yeah. yeah, I mean there's just a lot of things with sales distribution where it's sort of like if you're a low budget indie filmmaker do you want a drink of fireball or kalua uh yeah i mean or, or um like rum yeah i mean maybe fireball We've got I rum and lnp or uh fireball with L- lnp or fireball just on the straighties fireball and lnp might be all right all right well do you just you just tell the listeners i'll grab you a glass you just keep telling that yarn yeah. to the listeners yeah so again like sales distribution was at one point kind of marketed out to other people to do and it is sort of still that way but nowadays it's it's like you know 
you can make you can print dvds you can get um content up online on streaming platforms there's uh all these opportunities uh for the people directly if they're willing to take the time to sort of make that money themselves but instead like even now we go to someone else and go well can you do all that stuff for us um can you sort all that stuff they go yes of course we can sort all that stuff out for you i mean it's going to cost twenty five thousand dollars um before you make a dollar but we'll definitely sort all that stuff out for you um and so we are sort of coming into a time when we need to start thinking a little bit differently about distribution and that certainly in the low budget world and how we can sort of uh monetize that re-monetize that uh make money off it in different ways older t-shirts well who doesn't want a t-shirt that says older on it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, let's let's be honest. I reckon that actually we will be sensible if we change the name depending on the region anyway. So it might say two guys, a girl, and a low-budget movie or whatever the name of... Two what, se- having sex two, with two sexy girls. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Something that is going to get clicks online. So we'll call it like sexy girls and sexy man have sex. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, and, and then put the trailer as something you know raunchy but not too raunchy that it gets flagged mm. and then away you go away you go and it's just money in the bank but we might like you know we did get some quite decent suggestions from one of the sales agents about you know potential other names that they thought would work for the American television market and I thought there was a lot of merit to those suggestions I was like well they're actually they're pretty good ideas and you know they, they might not be the right one exactly but I feel like we're kind of in the right direction of something that's a little bit more um, clickable by those stay at home mums or whoever it is that they think might watch it so there were things like i can't actually remember do you remember any of the good ones from that email um uh but i remember there was one like uh, it was like 29 and undecided was yeah, one yeah yeah that type of thing that type 29 of thing and, undecided. and then you know and then the cover would be like you know like you look a photo a stock photo of you looking confused shrugging my shoulders or shrugging your shoulders with like a a broken heart behind you and these two <laughs> sexy women looking kind of like um like uh worried you know that, and look does that undermine completely undermine the artistic, the artistic integrity, integrity of a project? Yes. Do you know yes, what? It does. Do you know what else undermines the artistic integrity? Not making any money. Not being able to afford the next fucking film. Yeah. So we do have to make some tough decisions, and I did always consider that older may be a bought primarily by perverts. Well, I did want to bring up something. <laughs> actually, now that I think about it, I did actually have. Um, something here that I wanted to bring up about perverts and older. Right. Yes. And I'm looking for that. Yeah. Uh, well, note uh, that I, I mean, you know, like what I thought was like, look, we could try and make an awesome film, we could try and make a good film, but, you know, sex sells. Okay, look, I, I'm ready. So, does that mean that we simply sell the sex side of it and then people go, hey, I was just coming here to whack off, but actually, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. It, it, it sort of reminded me of, of you know, me, you know, having to sort of grow up and make some tough decisions, you know. So when I finished, I kept watching it, and I was really into it. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I need to confess something <laughs> uh, to, the, to the sexy 160. Um, I, can't, I, can't, I can't keep living with this dark secret, because I feel like the sexy 160... They're my, you know, they're my brethren. I just feel like it's it's time to come clean. Um, in front of these loyal few that know us so well, we are frauds, aren't we, guy? It's all an illusion. You see, the older trailer has five hundred thousand views and a lot of thumbs up on YouTube, and that's pretty impressive, right? Certainly looks impressive when you see it. When I tell people about it, um, you know, in America, when I was in LA, it looked impressive. When I told the CEO of the Film Commission about it, she was very impressed by that. Everyone was very impressed, to be honest. But actually, the only reason that video has 500,000 views is because I used a picture of Guy's bare ass as the thumbnail. You see? And that nudity sold. Yeah. So I'm, I'm literally... And this is, you know, this is a little bit sensitive... Um, I'm literally not making a joke about Bob's and Virgin, but 
if you look at the analytics on the older trailer, a full 24% of our viewers of the 500,000, a full 24% of our viewers on the older trailer are Indian men aged between 18 and 24. This is not a joke about Bob's and Virgin. It's not. And so the next highest percentage after that is Filipino men with 3.9%. That, that's a huge drop. That's yeah, a huge drop. We're talking about a quarter. A quarter of our total views versus the next demographic down is 3.9%. Mm. You know, that's a huge drop. That's a full quarter of our views are Indian men mm. surfing YouTube for stuff to wank about, presumably. Looking for my bare ass. Right? And guy's ass is really popular, evidently. Mm. Um, so, yes, this sort of cheap um, titty and ass thumbnail trick um, that I use to get the views... Um, uh, you know, is is kind of what happened there, and I would have got away with it too, um, if it weren't for those pesky um, people that um, flagged it as adult <laughs> content, which re- which really killed it. So now, if you want to go in, the, if, now if you want to watch it, you've got to sign in on YouTube. Um, who's which, got time for that? Who's got time for that? You know, when you're just trying to have a quick wank, and and so, um, so yes, so. <sighs> Is this, are the sixty one sixty disappointed in us for that, or is that exactly what they'd expect from us? It's probably what they'd expect. Mm. It's mm. just being savvy, 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 savvy marketers. At the end of the day, savvy. Yeah, savvy ones. Savvy. Yeah. Uh, if you're a savvy marketer, you will know that uh, that is one way to get your product out there. Yeah. Um, and also, look, look, you you also have to uh, ask yourself a question at a certain point, which is this. Uh, if your film made a million dollars because you exclusively marketed it to perverts yeah is it any less of a good film well the answer in my honest opinion is no it's not any less of a good film it is a good film and is it uh is it getting the recognition it deserves um, by, by doing it that way perhaps not you know like is the artistic integrity there is the can you really be proud of that 500,000 views or however many sales we get or whatever if they're selling it for that reason I mean sure sure it affects it affects it a little bit yeah you know compared to say just creating a festival darling and everybody loves it and it's critically yeah. you know loved and that's why people are watching it so sure it's a bit of a cheap tactic but Life is all about cheap tactics. This is what it's all about, people. This is how you do it. The fact of the matter is we got 500,000 views and the CEO of the Film Commission thought that was impressive. She doesn't know about the, um, you know, the titties and boobs um, thumbnails and the, you know, and the the high percentage of uh, Indian uh, Indian males between 18 and 24 that seem to be watching our trailer. You know, she doesn't know that. I'm not going to tell her. Let, let her believe that it's all people from New Zealand or America or whatever our target um, uh, sort of demographic or nation is, which is probably not Indian men between 18 and 24. No. Probably. For this particular film. So, yes, it's a it's an interesting conundrum, um, but artistically you have to think about going forward. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day you can't be too precious about how you make sales in this climate Mm. in this climate where it's very hard to make any sales of anything Mm. um so you know that's where we're at with our older uh marketing campaign (laughs) yeah so so (coughs) good uh good good okay cool well look uh, all of that stuff um if people want to support us you can go along on um youtube find that older trailer hit thumbs up sign in watch it hit thumbs up um and uh, go along to facebook and find older movie i think it's facebook.com slash older movie or possibly older the movie i always forget um facebook.com slash older movie and go and hit like there as well because that would be really helpful now i've got a few shout outs um for some 6160 listeners shout out to kieran charnock because he just won best actor at a film festival in brazil um massive shout out to alex bates who picked me up in a pink mustang when i landed in la now i didn't have a ride organized from lax to santa monica when i landed and i posted on facebook saying i was going to la and alex messaged me and she said uh do you want to ride and I've never met her in real life, uh, but we have been Facebook friends since I went to Screen Fest in 2016. She's a horror enthusiast. And so uh, I felt like the chances of being murdered were reasonably 
you know, slim, yep. you know, um, not guaranteed, certainly not guaranteed. Um, first thing I did was accept a large bottle of water with from her when I got into the car. Could have easily been drugged. Um, but I got, gobbled that all down in that pink Mustang. Um, and so anyway, shout out to Alex um, for not murdering me. Thank you very much. Um, she really was very kind to me. She picked me up and took me around all sorts of places. Um, also, I wanted to shout out Spooky Dan. Spooky Dan's a, ho- a horror enthusiast as well. He is the creator of creator of Slay Bells, spelt S L A Y. Slay. It's a horror. It's a it's a Christmas themed horror. So if you, uh, it's a feature film. So go out and check that out. Slay Bells. Um, also, Vinny, the guy that took me under his wing when I was in LA um, and uh, taught me all the tricks of the trade. Um, thank you very much to Vinny. Um, and uh, that might be it for now uh, for my shout outs. But, uh, but thank you to all those people. Yeah, and look, appreciate that. Um, shout out Bernie Rao, who's also on the other side of the country, uh, sorry, the other world side of the world, um, premiering his new feature film, After Killer Sofa, and who is also uh, working on his films for next year and sorting out his productions for next year. Yes, Shout out Bernie, just, uh, uh, arguably the most successful filmmaker we know in person. He just uh, gave us some good advice, uh, sales agent related, sent us a big email about that. Yep. Um, so thank you, Bernie. Appreciate that. Um, and I hope uh, all your production uh, plans go well for, for next year. Mm. Now, when I was in LA, uh, another thing I did while I was there, and I, I don't think I've actually told you this yet, Guy, mm. is I when I went there, I did catch up... With my ex-girlfriend, she who shall not be named. Angie. Angie! <laughs> uh, and she had her um, uh, new uh, baby recently. Uh, she had a, a recently she had a, a, a new baby. This baby was only a couple of weeks old when I was in LA. It was a very, very, very new baby. Mm. Uh, and I hadn't seen her in sort of two and a half years. Since uh, Operation Flying Sparrow. Operation Flying Sparrow, which was my plan to intercept her at the airport as she passed through Auckland um, on her way to Queenstown. And woo her. Yeah, win her back. Uh, win her back after our five-year relationship. Uh, uh, we, we were cruelly torn as- asunder by a, a twist of uh, geography um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, choice uh, <laughs> and so <laughs> um, so on her part <laughs> well I guess she did she did choose um, <laughs> I guess she did choose but so anyway we broke up she went over there and um, she uh, eventually had a new boyfriend um, uh, who we have mentioned before I call him the usurper uh, I also call him the uh, kaku laying his egg his kaku's <laughs> his, his, his kaku's egg in my nest <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway I was in LA and before I went to LA <laughs> I said to myself well look if I'm going all the way across the world if I'm going all the way across the world right and let's just say she, well, she, I know that she doesn't live in the suburb that I'm going to be in I'm going to be in Santa Monica she's miles away uh, in a different suburb and so I was like well should I am I going to go see this person you know via Uber or whatever you know should I do that if it's going to cost me like a hundred US dollars or something like that for this fucking massive Uber across LA um, but I was like well look if you're going to go all the way across the globe am I really going to let a few miles and a hundred bucks stop me from like you know meeting with her catching up with her saying hello you know, I feel like there was a lot that was left unsaid because we didn't break up and then she left. She left and then we broke up. Mm. So, you know, uh, she's become a bit of a mythical creature in my mind. I dream about her and my dead dog Slade, who I have for 13 years. Uh, I dream about both of them coming back, uh, uh, usually. Not often. as zombies either. Not as zombies. Um, and so, so anyway. It's not a pet cemetery style situation. The thing is, she lives with her boyfriend, her baby daddy. Her boo. Her boo. Her, her new, new boo, boo. Her replacement Harley. The poor fucking poor man's substitute. The less tattooed, less twinkly blue eyed, uh, less successful he, filmmaker. Less hairy. He's definitely less hairy. And he's also taller and he's got a full head of hair. 
But well, look, we don't need to dwell on the specifics. <laughs> Get into okay? semantics. Yeah. And now look, okay, so he's at her house, right? He's They live together. You could say he's at his house. And <laughs> <laughs> you so, could say he pays the rent there. <laughs> and so, so, so and she's got this new baby. So I say, all right, look, I'm, uh, I'm going to go anyway. And she can't, you know, meet me without him, you know, because, you know, she's got this new baby and it just it's, it's not going to work, you know. So my options are to go to her house or to go to her house. So I opted in the end to go to her house. And I got in the Uber uh, when the Mex- and there was this Mexican guy driving, mm. and he and he, and I told him the situation. He was like, he was like, "Hey man, you going to work?" And I was like, "No, nah, it's worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's much, much worse than and, that." And he goes, "Oh, you must be going to your baby mama's house to pay the child support." And I was like, "Nope." It's even worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, whoa, <laughs> I don't know what this is, man. And so I told him the situation Yeah. and, and he went silent for a while and he goes, so I told him the situation. He, he goes, he goes, so you're going to your baby mama's house? No, so you're going to your ex-girlfriend's house uh, and she lives with her baby daddy to see her new baby with her baby daddy? <laughs> 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 and, I, and I was like, yeah. And he was like, I wouldn't do that, bro. <laughs> And he was serious. He goes, he goes, he goes, I can turn this car around right now, man. He, gave, he was giving you good advice. <laughs> I can turn this car right around now. I can turn right now, <laughs> man. I can take you home, bro. <laughs> this <is> great advice. <laughs> and so, but I was, I was committed by then. I was like, nope, I'm going to go. And this guy's American. There's a very real possibility he's just going to shoot me on sight. Right? You know, he's like, you know, here I am. This is how people get killed. Right, you're gonna go see your ex girlfriend who's got a baby with a new guy, and he's an American. I mean, he can't have really been. Uh, he uh, he has like six guns. He can't have been too. They all have six each. Too enthused with the situation. Well, I I doubt he was enthused. Well, I like, feel like so 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 he's like, he's so, like Angie, so, why is this jabroni coming around to our house right now? So this fucking Just guy. Human me, like, why is he here? Can this explain this to me? Why he's coming around to see my fucking brand new baby? What does your ex fucking boyfriend have to do with my brand new two? week old baby yeah so shout out to the guy i've got to give him some grudging <laughs> respect because well, yeah, he, he did didn't put the kibosh on it yeah he did he did tolerate that uh which i which i do uh respect so um thank you very much for that kindness because you wouldn't have <laughs> you wouldn't have tolerated it oh mate i would have confiscated her phone months ago there'd be no chance of messaging yeah <laughs> nah come on i would have actually let her met with her ex-boyfriend um uh, in your house with him? Well, preferably, right? Wouldn't you? Isn't that better? He was very smart. He didn't leave the house that day. You know, isn't that better? Like rather than like, oh yeah, go away. I'll look after the baby, and you go and meet your ex. That's yeah. this. Uh, he's smart. He's smart. Um, so anyway, um, I went there, and it was a little bit magical to see her. Uh, she looked very similar to how she used to look. Radiant. Radiant. Even after a. Even two weeks after having a baby pregnancy yep um and so uh i saw her um she they only got five seconds alone with her really which was kind of like on the way up and down the stairs when i first kind of arrived there and when she walked me out other than that i was hanging out with her baby daddy and her and her baby and i held her baby for a little bit and it was all very uh i mean it was quite surreal. emotional it was quite surreal it was quite emotional um and it was sad uh, you know it definitely drew a wee tear from my uh I but um, you were looking at what the life I could have had. Yeah, the life were, that you, could have been my life. You were. Look- I was moving to LA, and they were living in LA in an apartment, an affordable apartment. You know, the type of place that potentially I would be living there with her. You know, and with this baby, which could have potentially been it was mine. A window, a little half Latino, half white, half blue eyed, half brown eyed baby. It was a window into a, a parallel universe, alternate reality. That could have been you. Yeah, it could have been. That's the life, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful lifestyle situation. Well, can I tell you the, the truth, though? The truth is that while I did uh, miss her and and uh, I was very moved by the, the whole thing and it was all quite surreal and dreamlike, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that when I left, I wasn't like, oh, my gosh, I wish I had a baby in an apartment in LA you yeah. know I was not like I would swap my life right now for this you know that's that's a fact you know yeah. I, I would take this uh, at the moment the way I see it I would take this kind of these career advances and these adventures and all that type of thing you know over you know sort of that um, settling in more sentient uh, not sentient sedim, sed, 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 sedimentary 
there's a word for staying sedentary. still. Sedentary. Sedentary, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Uh, life. You know, I wasn't necessarily like. I was like, this doesn't look bad, but I wasn't like, this is what I want. You're like, this doesn't look bad, but fuck that shit. Well, I'm out to drink some beers right now. Well, I literally got picked up in a pink Mustang and then went and had some beers. Um, which is, you know, like, afterwards, you know, it's a, it's important to remember, you know, the grass isn't always greener. Yeah. Well, sometimes the grass is always greener on the other side because you're not over there fucking it up. Shitting everywhere and stuff. You know, over there defecating all over the grass, can... which would then be spoiled by your shit. Exactly. Which is how paddocks, you know, have to be moved on from. Yes, exactly. So, you know, that, that that's a very good point. Mm, 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 mm. So the moral of the story is, yes, it was sad. Yes, there's a tinge of regret. But at the end of the day, it's for the best. Well, this, yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> this it's life, for the best. this life that I live has ups and downs. I, you know, I'm a little bit um, down at the moment because I'm still recovering from this injury that you know the sixty, the sixty one sixty will know about from three months ago, uh, literally three months ago, uh, as of yesterday, um, where I injured myself and then guy burst through the door and fireman carried me to the um, oh, hospital to the hospital. Yeah, oh, to the doctors. Uh, yeah, the emergency doctor. Um, and well, I'm still recovering from that. What I've, it's all official. What I've got, all the, all the, all the people agree. It's a her, uh, herniated disc. So that's changed though. Which is pressing up, which has spurted out some spinal fluid. Um, cool. Uh, which and that is now pressing up against my sciatic nerve. Right. Which runs all the way down my leg, like down my ass, down my thigh, all the way down to my ankle. Because originally, what they thought was that it was just a sciatic nerve well issue, well not they, a herniated disc yeah this is the first uh, time you've mentioned herniated disc yet. yeah i guess i was just in denial about wanting to i wanted to place it in my leg not my back right you know but they were all more or less like yeah no 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 it's a herniated disc you've uh, you know like clinically they diagnose it pretty quickly and all of them agree all of the specialists all the surgeons everybody all agrees they're like yeah yeah it's a herniated disc that's pressing up against your sciatic nerve and so the sciatic nerve is the symptom. The herniated disc is the issue, is the cause. Now, is there a, a surgical procedure? They could, but they don't want to do that yet. What they reckon is that whether you have surgery or not, it eventually drops off anyway. So basically, there's a bit spurting out of my spine and pressing against my nerve. And I've just got to wait for it to basically die and fall off and dissolve back into my body. <laughs> um, or I can get it removed surgically. But they reckon that no matter which method you choose, you kind of end up about the same a year later anyway. Right. You know, so if you can do it without surgery, you should. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's pretty depressing though. I was in quite a lot of pain today. Uh, it does affect my work. Uh, everything I'm doing, I'm operating at 70%. The film festival I worked on was happened two weeks after my the back injury. So I was at 70%. Uh, you know, LA, 70%. Producing a short film last weekend, which we barely had the chance to talk about, Operating at 70%. All of it's at 70%. Everything I'm doing. Fortunately, 70% for me is like 150% for a normal person. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying, you know, it's not satisfying for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, I I mean, we have mentioned it here before, but, you know, your health. Ah, uh, no, I'm all right. Pretty important. You. It's nice to get the Fireball Whiskey back on the show after all these years. Yeah. Um, your health is really, that's it, man. Like, <sighs> Well, it's true. You don't get it back and you don't fuck around with your back, man. Uh, that being yeah. said, the the specialist said to me the other day, he goes, he goes, yeah, well, look, look, you know, you're doing okay, you're recovering okay. Look, don't do anything. You don't want to be doing anything like carrying um, baggage or going on twelve hour flights. And you're like, and uh -huh, I was, and I was uh -huh. like, I was, I was like, I literally came back from all of that last week. Uh huh. Yeah. And, and may do that again. Well, I've been asked tomorrow to work uh, doing camera work, but I uh, hopefully it won't be too much strain on my back but um but i do have uh, some work that i really probably shouldn't do tomorrow but i need the money christmas all these strippers all these lap dancers mm. private yeah well that's so, what makes them more expensive yeah well speaking of private lap dancers mm -hmm. do you want to talk about private mm -hmm. lap dancers yeah sure so i did go to the strip club at lunchtime the other day um, because I am Facebook friends with a young cosplayer slash Instagram model. Um, she was influencer. one. She's an influencer, exactly. She was one of the 
uh, zombie dancers at the world premiere of I Survived a Zombie Holocaust in Dunedin. Uh, she was 18 at the time, and I never met her, but she saw me there at, this, at the world premiere of I Survived a Zombie Holocaust, and she added me. Um, and since then, we've chatted online occasionally and kept in touch, but never actually met. And so fast forward uh, four years, and now she's a 22-year-old stripper in Auckland. Uh, she's just moved up here recently. Uh, and so she invited me down to the... Dreams the, do come true, kids. They do. If you hold out for long enough, when if you hold out till you're a 36-year-old man, uh, you might get invited by a 22-year-old stripper to go for a lap dance, which is what happened to me. Which will not be free. Well, no. Um, so we've never met, right? Now, I know that the sexy, uh, sexy 160 listeners think that my life is just all kind of sex and drugs and rock and roll and all that stuff, but actually it's just drugs and listening to rock and roll on Spotify. Uh, can we talk about how long you've been celibate for? Uh, well, well, yeah. I mean, I don't know how long you know. How long? I don't tell you about every conquest. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long has it been? Well, there was. I had a little visitor uh, one time in the night. Um, Thief of the night. Uh, <laughs> skulked in uh, one night uh, about three and a half months ago. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but before that was probably three and a half months before that uh, with the same visitor. Um, and, Wait, be- sorry. And, and before that, who knows? So three months. Yeah. Visitor of the night. Yeah. Three months before that. Yeah. Same, same visit- visitor. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. That's kind of like two times in a year. Um, this time last, <laughs> this time, yeah. this time last year, I was. I believe it was actually the breakfast faux pas. Was uh, was this time last year, uh, which was the uh, when I was the dating. Incident. I was dating a young lady um, temporarily, um, but anyway. So 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 yes. I you know it's been all quiet on. on it's more my love life's more of a love death at the moment. You could say. Um, but anyway, so the listeners think I'm a rock and roll, sex, drugs, rock and roll type. But um, actually, uh, they might be shocked to learn that I've actually never had a private lap dance in my life. Um, I've been to strip clubs, but I've never gone into a, a private room with a stripper and had her boogie around and put her butt in my face. Um, I've never done it. Have, have you? I was just trying to think. Um, Seems like the type of thing you'd remember. The answer is... The answer is the answer is what did I tell Tisha? The answer probably is what did I tell her when she asked me this? Probably I, not. I would say that the uh, the safest answer is not. Probably not. I think the answer is I don't. <laughs> I don't recall the time where I was in a room singular. Yeah. With a just one on one with a stripper. Okay. Well, look, look. Okay. All, all my life, I've kind of prided myself a bit on taking the adventurous path. All right. I've travelled. I've lived in vans long term. I've forged a career in the arts. You've made other people do your washing while you've lived in vans. I've done. I've literally washed my <laughs> undies in a pool, a, like a gross paddling pool in a public um, garden, and then got guy to drive around with my undies hanging out the side of his car which we called at the time the red dwarf uh <laughs> red dwarf red the red one fuck that was a while ago. remember the red we called it the red dwarf from the from that show yeah red dwarf yeah. we called it red dwarf right because yeah. it was red anyway and i we drove around uh, with my undies hanging out the side of his car to get them dry and he said he he said it didn't deserve it he said the car didn't deserve that <laughs> Um, anyway, no car deserves that. <laughs> so, so well, it's not my fault. I was fucking poor and homeless. Um, anyway, um, the point is that I, you know, I'm trying to take adventurous. the more adventurous life, you know, as a general rule. Um, and so, you know, if I'm going to meet this Facebook Facebook friend of four years, and the experience is going to be me, you know, going down to a strip club and her putting her bits and pieces in my face. You know, um, within minutes of meeting each other, the truth is that that looks like a you know th- that I'm at a crossroads and I've got to choose between the adventurous option of meeting this person or do I just take her out for a coffee, right? Do I just meet her for a coffee sometime? You know, she wants to meet. We've, we've been Facebook friends for all this time. Let's meet up. I like meeting randoms from my Facebook. I'm okay with that. You know, and so if they put what are my bits options? in your face, then they're, that's they're not, bits and not, pieces. You're not adverse to that. Well, exactly. You know, I mean, when I'm on my deathbed, do you think I'm going to look back at this time and be like, God? I wish I didn't, you know, let that stripper put her bits and pieces in my face. You know, I wish I just took her out for a coffee. You know, I, I don't really think so. I think I'll pass away wrapped up in that warm memory with just a smile on my face. 
you know. Uh, and so, so anyway, the other day I drove from the city, I drove into the city, parked in the CBD, something I hate doing. Um, and then uh, with my sore back, I waddled over to the strip club in the middle of the day. I was accosted by the bouncer who insisted that I get $20 worth of stripper dollars before I go in and that I've got to buy a drink and I've got to tip the girls who are dancing. And I was like, well, I'm just here for a lap dance, actually. Um, and, and, and he was like, oh, yeah you should probably still get that 20 bucks and then force me to get the 20 bucks anyway. Uh, So I walked in, I got myself a spate. So I sat down next to two scantily clad women and I said, hello ladies, to which they replied, all right, love, because they were English. And uh, I asked them where this uh, young lady was that I was there to meet. And apparently she had gone home sick uh, only an hour beforehand, struck down by some pox, no doubt. Um, and so, so I, I sat there and I finished my beer and I got out before the stripper on stage came over looking for tips and, um, uh, and got the fuck out of there. And then I asked her the price of all this. Uh, I hadn't asked the price yet. So I messaged her. I was like, Hey, you weren't here. And she was like, <laughs> so was, and then I was like, uh, what, what, what are the prices we're talking here? So I got the mm. prices a mm. little bit shocked. Mm. They're talking $90 for 10 minutes mm. of a private lap dance. Mm. $150 for 30 minutes hmm. or $300 for the VIP room uh, in which I understand it you're allowed to touch their boobs um, but there's a strict no jerking off rule that I've been informed about as well which S- really defeats your master plan well I mean it just sounds pretty frustrating right you're going to walk out onto the uh, the glaring sun of the Auckland CBD with the, and the no Auckland CBD it's down by Queen Street oh I care that one yeah yeah and you're um you're in the Auckland CBD you know in the glaring sunlight of day with a raging erection you know frustrated and three hundred dollars lighter um it sounds to be quite a bad deal really mm. I mean if, I, if I'm really honest I mean I was all for it but now I'm thinking like well fuck that's actually a lot of money. I, I'd do the 90 bucks for 10 minutes just for the adventure side of things. You know, that sounds cool. Mm. I don't mind that. But, I mean, anything more than that. I mean, this adventure's getting a bit silly. I still haven't gone into the K-Road jerk-off place. Remember I was going to go into the K-Road jerk-off place and secretly record the audio? Yeah. You remember that? Got yeah. to do that. Got yeah. to do that. Yeah, uh, yeah well, look, uh, it is expensive. People do have to make a living. I mean, yeah, but I feel like for three hundred dollars, well, you know, one hundred and fifty dollars, you know, you could, you could perhaps have a similar arrangement, but as a, leave feeling a little more satisfied. As a cameraman, I charge fifty dollars per hour. Yeah, and I'm bringing some expensive ten thousand dollar equipment. Yeah, now, do you really think the equipment they're using? It's worth ten thousand dollars. Well, exactly. So they should be charging twenty five bucks an hour. Exactly. I should be getting a, str- a lap dance for twenty five dollars for a full hour. Should be sweating. Should be tired <laughs> as fuck at the end of it. But you know. Well, you know, I look forward to your next update. Follow up of that. I'm yeah. sure there will be one. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, I do have twelve stripper dollars left. That I've got so to that's gonna that I've count, got to use. That's going to count against your ninety. Well, I've got to go in there now. I've got to go. I've got twelve. Sh- I can only spend them at the strip club. That's how they get you. So I've got to go back in now, or I'm wasting this twelve bucks. If you want to go uh, to a strip club in Auckland, you could go to this strip club. Well, you could. I mean, I would never. I would never give away the. I mean, she probably wants me to give away where well, it is. Dollars. It's a dollar dollar bills, yo. Yeah, you don't you don't suppose that she has pegged you for a money mark. Oh, absolutely. I feel like there is a real possibility of that. As in as in like obviously it's coming up to Christmas, she needs a bit of money. She can um shake a shake a few Facebook messages out. I do this to the beer lovers all the time. You know, shake yep. a, shake a bit of money out of them every now and then. Send them a picture of your butt or whatever. Yeah. Um and so, you know, she'll be doing the same thing with me. Um, although I do like to feel like it's a little bit special because I am, she is a, uh, a horror enthusiast, which and is how are. we first kind of, you know, became, uh, friends. And you are a star of a and cult And I horror film. am a f- star, a horror film star. A leading man. Leading man in a cult iconic, uh, in certain circles, feature film called I Survived a Zombie Holocaust. And so, you know, it is possible that, um, you know, like, uh, you know, she might she might just be interested because I'm, you know, she's a horror enthusiast. Yeah, I mean, sure, she's charging me full price, but I mean, you know, I mean. What do you have to the discount? 
well, the leading man discount. The leading man discount. That's the thing. I mean, after me showing up and her not even being there, I feel like this should be a fucking freebie anyway. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I paid for parking. And CBD. And the CBD. That would have, that would have been twelve dollars. Could say she owes me. So the other day we went to the guilds party, right? You and we, me. Yeah, we did. And um, what we both noticed actually, uh, quite a few people uh, recognized mm. us. Yeah. Uh, and so so a few people recognized me, and they'd say like, "Hey, Harley, nice to see you in real life." And I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure." But they wouldn't say who the fuck they were. Yeah. They just expect me to recognize them from Facebook or whatever. But it's like, well, come on. No, you've got to say, hey, Harley, I'm da-da-da. You know, we're Facebook friends, you know. Um, but but they didn't do that. Or they, they might say just their first name. And, I, and I'd feel really rude because I was like, you know, I thought maybe they thought that I thought I was a big shot or something like that. And I don't even know who they are in that. When really, they just haven't said who they are. And it's not my fucking fault. You know that I'm such a that we're such big deals. Well, know? that's the thing. I tend to preface everything by a, like a little intro. Like, so I see people that I recognise there. Yeah. And I don't really expect them to remember. Yeah. And so if I do have a convo with them, I'm like, hey, um, you know, uh, how's it going? I'm Guy. I'm the director of Vice Five of the Zombie Holocaust. We caught up at some other thing, and then yeah. they'll go, oh. Right. Well, that's yes, how it should be, right? Thank you. And I go, cool. Because, yeah, of course you wouldn't remember, like, me specifically of yeah. the million uh, of these events that you go to in a year, what you saw two years ago and blah, blah, blah. Well, now, this party is for all of the unions of the showbiz. So it's all the, the actors union. Yeah, they call them guilds, but it's just effectively a union. Actors union, cinematography, directors and editors, you know, they've all got their own kind of unions yeah. and they all work together. And they, once a year they have a party, a party in which they don't put on any fucking piss. But they did have some nice food there. Yeah. But, I mean, people are paying, like, memberships here. I know. I'm not. I was your plus one. Well, you were my plus one, and I got mine free for the, the festival that I work on. But that's not the point, okay? <laughs> they should be putting on some free pass. So are you not a member either? I'm a member, but I've got, I got my membership sponsored. Because, you oh, know, right. that's how this works. Nepotism. Nepotism. That's how this all goes down, right? You you think that rich people are paying for shit. They're not paying for shit. They get it all through their connections. And I'm that's what I'm starting to get now. Well, you, this, go, you go, yeah. oh, okay, this thing's like several hundred dollars per year, but I get it for free through one of my, like, employers, one of my work one of my one of my jobs you know yeah one of my connections that's how it works yeah well uh rich people don't get forced to pay for shit it, it is kind of scary like um our friend Emmy uh, mentioned that i've saw i've met one of her friends several times and i've unrecognized them every time every time yeah and they're, they're kind of insulted because uh, is this person like a guy or a girl a guy, a guy. It's a, oh yeah yeah i don't remember guys either um but it's like, look, I'm sorry, but I, like, all I can put in my head is all the filmmaking stuff we're doing at this point, mm. right? That's all I can fit in my brain. So I can fit in what we're working on, what is to be worked on, and, uh, you know, my brain is trying to constantly solve those problems. Mm. Uh, but can you uh, like you know? I can I remember? Like, I can't remember any of the birthdays of like. Oh, mate! Anyone? I don't remember anybody's birthday either. But you get surprisingly pissed off, and I don't remember your birthday. Well, yes, Harley, because we <laughs> we've been we, friends we've been for friends twenty years. years. <laughs> so that's, uh, 22, 20, 23 years, actually. It yes, would be. So that's why my that's so I feel like that should be re reminded of it several times. By yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Twenty three times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's very hard sometimes when you're a celebrity like we are to, uh, remember the common folk yeah. as they're known. Yeah. Uh, I should actually give a quick shout out to my close personal friend, Alex Savage. He just wrestled in Wellington yesterday. Yep. And, uh, saw a couple of old friends, uh, from high school who showed up. Uh, not the person that uh, he was staying with, Nick Larson. He was actually at the Weta party. Yeah. Uh, the Weta workshop. The, the yep. famous Weta digital Presumably digital, or is it Weta? Um, yeah, so I've got a kind of interesting story workshop. about that. So, so One of the two. So essentially, Weta, the conglomerate of Weta. Well, you better explain what Weta is. For well, all, it's, it's I mean, a, all our filmmaker friends will know. But it's basically filmmaker listeners. the visual effects 
like Peter, the, the Peter Jackson's visual effects company. I think it's actually owned by Richard Taylor, but yeah, uh, he works with it or something. Jointly yeah. owned, yeah. Um, and apparently now the guy from Napster owns some of it too. I've just been told. Justin Timberlake. Uh, no, the uh, other guy from Napster. Ah, I can't remember his name. Sean, someone, something. Yeah, Sean Bean. Um, so anyway, these these uh it's this huge uh visual effects company it does visual effects for every single fucking film you've ever heard of so it's not just like oh lord of the rings and all that yeah they did all that but they also do it for you know every new film in hollywood pretty much so anyway they throw a party a christmas party to say thank you at the end of the year for making everyone work um 18 hours per day yeah uh under tight deadlines and like horrific working conditions and this is their way to say thank you yeah um, and so they really go fucking hardcore. So you were so spend, in Wellington at the same time that our dear friend Nick was going to the Weta party. And they spent a million dollars on this party, apparently. Well, it looked like it. I saw some of the pictures. They had Schnei Schnoodles was there. Schnei Schnoodles was Schnei, there. Schnei Schnoodles, as the sexy 160 listeners all know who Schnei Schnoodles is, of course, uh, from yeah. um, Star Wars. Star the original, Wars. which one was it? Uh, Return which, of the Jedi. Return of the and yeah. Uh, she, yeah, uh, she's got a. Uh, Can you like, sing it? Yeah. Something, something. I can't remember the rest. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But uh, yeah. You so, know who we're talking about. Uh, yeah, she, so it's basically in the before Jabba the Hutt. Is actually sense. the guy that shot first. No, um, Han, Han shot first. I saw a picture of the guy of the bounty hunter. Greedo. Greedo. I saw Greedo. Yeah. Uh, in these pictures, actually, not Schnei Schnoodles. Yeah, space themed. I year. assume that Schnei was there. Schnei. Uh, well, the, I, can, the, I don't the cantina. Under- Nick sent me a photo of the cantina mm-hmm. people being there. Why the fuck is the fucking Magic and Light or com- what's that company called? Industrial Light and Magic. Industrial Light and Magic. Why is Weta doing an Industrial Light and Magic themed party? That's what I want to fucking know. Well, you That's know. what I want to get to the bottom of. What? These guys don't have, like, King Kong and Lord of the Rings. They can't do, like, their own characters from their own world well they already did we went to that we did we went to the king kong party it was pretty cool it was very cool we were on the set of king kong with all the buildings built up to the first level um looking legit you know like they were built of polystyrene and stuff but they looked like the real rock and all that type of thing and you could walk around the streets of this um downtown new york from the How the fuck 20s did or whatever. Me and you get tickets we got in because nick and rogan worked there just like nick and rogan went to the wedding party this year so disappointingly no one got me a ticket this time well you did fail to organize that though yeah it was i should have like looked into it sooner i guess but i wasn't necessarily anticipating that that was coming up so no. anyway close personal friend he wrestled uh had an amazing match uh in front of a great uh crowd there and including uh kit Verhoff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh did he come because you were there no apparently so i was he like he came in spite of you being there. i was like did you guys come because i was uh because my close personal friend was wrestling yeah and they said no we have actually been coming to a lot of these because they're really fucking good yeah and I was like, sweet, awesome. They're so like, did they realize or were they surprised when you walked out on stage? No, they knew they because knew. they'd seen the ad for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was great to see them. It was great to wrestle in front of a like a hot crowd or at least so my close personal friend tells me. Yeah. Um, well, you it, were in attendance, so it's okay. I was in attendance. You was were in the crowd. I was in the audience. He's in the audience. Um, and so, yeah, it was a pretty awesome time there. And, you know, these whirlwind trips, sometimes I'm like, why is Alex Savage doing this? This is so expensive. That's and, that's and, exactly what I think. And 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 you know, like, what is the point? Uh, <laughs> that's exactly what I think. Uh, but then uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm watching from the audience, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. This yeah, is a fucking awesome time. Yeah, no wonder he does that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, this is well worth. Yeah, every penny. And so, fuck filmmaking. Uh, well, I wouldn't go that far, Harley. <laughs> so I get carried away, mate. It's what I work on in the other uh, 24 hours of every day, yeah. apart from that Saturday. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it was very cool, and uh, it was cool to catch up with Nick. Uh, and I, I was, on the one hand, I was a little bit upset that I didn't get to go to the wedding party with them. Mm. But on the other hand, I was like, I got back after an exhausting night at sort of 11 p.m., and I was like, oh, I'm going to sweat, I'm going to stay, I'm going to watch some video, I'm going to just relax, I'm going to kick back, I've got some time to myself, I don't have my laptop, so I can't do any work. Mm. 
uh what actually happened is i fell straight asleep yeah of course. Uh, and uh there was really if i'd gone to that party i don't really feel i would have been fully functional for it mm. i'm also just getting over a, a horrible cold so all of these things make it a, a, a silly proposition to go to mm. and we already went to the king kong one what more do you want well that was 10 years ago or more but yeah sure 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 you could argue that the party would be much more valuable nowadays because you could go to the Weta party and you could talk to people there about visual effects and so on and you could say, well, I'm a filmmaker. I've made two feature films and a third feature film, which is a medical documentary. So arguably our next one is my fourth feature film and uh, uh, I uh, am going to need to get some um, VFX done at some point. It's going to be nice for me to have these um, uh, connections to these people. I actually had a few drinks um, with... Uh, two people that used to work at Industrial Light and Magic. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And they now work at Weta. And, mm. and they've been doing, they were doing um, Aquarius Man and putting, making Will Smith look young. Um, uh, and so uh, you could have got some nice, valuable connections there for the next one, for the family to get some VFX done at a world class kind of um, place, but, you know, for cheap or free, which apparently they do do if they, you know, if they have time. Um, and somebody was actually asking me about that in LA. They were like, oh, so you guys can produce sh- shit, eh? And I was like, yes, sir, we can produce stuff, absolutely. All day. All day. I produce things all the time. And he was like, cool, because I've got a whole bunch of movies that I need to make. This was a, a producer in LA. Um, um, well, actually, a, a sales agent uh, with uh, Equity Line in LA who was is, needs to get these things made, and he was like, "So you can do it all. You can do the production. You can organize. You know everything. What about the post production?" I was like, "Oh, not a problem. I know the post production people." And they're like, "What about VFX? Can you get the VFX done?" And I was like, "Well, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, there's lots of VFX in New Zealand. We know there's Weta, for example." And he was like, "Well, it's probably pretty hard to get in there." And I was like, "No." I mean, I've heard you can get in if you know the right people. Uh, so that might be a complete load of shit, but I did hear that somewhere, that people, they do work on those bits and pieces. So arguably, you could have got there and perhaps um, organized something like that. Well, I mean, I think that's the big problem is that, uh, you know, um, what I think the difference seems to be between here and other countries is that you can you can make the film very cheaply over here. You and I have done that. We've 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 done the shoot of the film um very cheaply however the post-production process mm. so it's it's cheaper over here that's where to, it all goes horribly wrong it's cheaper over here to make the film but when you go through the post-production process properly somehow america has a super cheap sort of budget walkthrough of that, yeah. that we don't have some sort of streamlining well, just some sort of, I mean, uh, you, it makes sense. There's more of these post-production houses. And, you know, obviously they give much less time and care to these things. They kind of shit them out. But they do heaps of them. And I think, I, I just feel like when we're breaking down these budgets, uh, what we're really looking at is the post-production budget is, is, is what becomes a problem over here. When, you know, you, you talk to some of these American people, they're like, yeah, we do that in-house for this much. And it's like, you say what now mm. um yeah yeah speaking of shitty vfx um i have started watching the irishman this is a new guy martin scorsese yeah uh he's working with a fresh new cast um <laughs> robert de niro pacino Al de pacino. niro leo someone joe pesci pesci that's it um, hot young cast. A hot young cast. Of up and comers. So I'm a third of the way through it. You yeah. know, no spoilers or anything like that. Um, it is... Uh, have you seen it? No. No, okay. Well, look, look. I mean... I downloaded it. When I saw the duration... Three hours, 20. Three and a half hours is what it says on Netflix. I did... Uh, I almost um, released my penis and switched off the television and just went to sleep. Mm. But I decided to watch like the first little bit of it. So I did. I watched the first third or so of it. Um, and it's actually pretty good, I thought. It's actually, I'm, I'm going to finish it. Makes sense. I'm going to finish it. Um, but there is a couple of things like uh, some of the VFX and, and some a little bit of the violence. Like, I mean, Al Pacino is literally uh, 115 years old now. Yeah. And so um, there was a scene where he was beating somebody up. Yeah. And I was like, gosh, that looks like shit. I was like, why didn't you cut into a close-up of a foot stomping on somebody or something like that? Yeah. Why, you know, instead it was kind of in this wide shot yeah. of this elderly, elderly 
elderly man, like you know, throwing frail punches. Not even they were kicks. Throwing frail, frail. Kicks. Ki- he looked like me trying to kick at the moment with my back injury. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and 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 I was like, why didn't why did they do it that way? But anyway, uh, it, it was good, and people should um, check it out. So far, although I'm quite early, I'm only a third of the way in. I'm only an hour and a bit into this fucking thing. Well, it's kind of interesting because it's Scorsese is is uh, one for the wide shots. Right. So I feel like that's like him personally. Yeah. His style, he's like, we want to see this as a wide. We want to see this as a wide. So you uh, you get well, a, sh- somebody kick sh- him, kick him, Pacino, kick him. He's like, I am, but I'm 72. Yeah. Well, and it's hard for me to do this sh- with the same vim and vigor that I once could. Somebody should probably mention to Scorsese about um, this new thing. They call it coverage coverage yeah well also they should probably run stunt doubles by him as well well yeah stunt doubles coverage yeah all of those things might be helpful might be yeah apparently they went 30 million dollars over budget really yeah as you do i mean that was all that was all going to the cast i'm looking forward to going 30 million dollars over budget on something well i'd say that our career is 30 million dollars over budget already (laughs) to be honest (laughs) With the amount of money we spend on these fucking things <laughs> and the small amount that we make back. Patreon.com slash pigville if you'd like to support us. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, we better wrap should this up. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah, because I actually have a lot of work You to need do. to go. Um, I've got some important stuff to do. Important things. Lots of important things. So I'll be doing those. <laughs> well, I do a lot of work. Yeah, um, and yeah, we didn't get time for buzz buzz on Bumble. I do, I did um, ask out uh, one young lady that I met uh, through a production recently, and we're going to go on a drink sometime soon. Um, alas, she is a teetotaler, but she didn't tell me until after I asked her out for a drink. So I was like, cool. So should we go do something? She's like, yep. And I was like, cool. Well, let's keep it casual. Let's go and meet for a drink at such and such or such and such a place on such and such a day. Uh, and she was like, cool, cool, cool. I'll let you choose the place because I've been into a bar once uh, because I don't drink. And I was like, hmm, okay, okay, all right. So we'll see. We'll just see, I guess. I mean, who doesn't go to a bar at least with their friends or something? You know what I mean? You don't have to drink to go to a bar. But, you know, like I said, well, it's all good. We can have some mocktails. And she goes, what's a mocktail? Hmm. And I was like, hmm. Okay, mm. it just seems like maybe we're actually from two different worlds, but um, but let's see, let's see how we go, let's see how we go. She might be a great influence on me. She might um, steer me away from the self-destructive path that I'm spiraling down. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you never know. All right, well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, you can go along to Patreon.com and search for Pigville. You can go to YouTube and search for Pigville. And the number two, you can go to Facebook and search for The Guy and Harley Podcast. And if you liked this show, please hit thumbs up. Please um, hit like, hit sub, hit, give us a, um, a review, all that type of stuff. It really does help um, because we don't push this show very hard. We kind of um, sort of desperately need your help, dear listener. Um, so please feel free to share it, thumbs it up, all that type of thing. Um, and we will catch you uh, ASAP, I hope, because we've actually got lots of things to talk about. I did a whole production. I produced a shootout, a pedophile. I didn't tell you about it. So, yeah. And you chose not to be in it. I chose not to be in it. I, I did. I did. We did mention this in a previous episode, yeah. um, but only briefly that I was producing this show. That this young, this young kid found me on Facebook. He showed up on my doorstep with his hat in his hand, and he said, "He said, he said, Mr. Neville, sir, Mr. I've heard about you producing, Mr. Neville, sir, and I, I, I was wondering if I might get a beer meeting with you." <laughs> and so I, I had a meeting with the guy. Uh, obviously, he was paying for the beer, and. Um, <laughs> So that's how it works in the piss. That's how it works. You know, you ask me for my time, you you, you provide the piss. Um, and so he uh, asked me for a meeting. I went for a meeting with him. He said, I've got uh, a small budget, $4,000, and a script that I want to shoot. It's an 11-page script. It's mostly set in one location, but I don't know anybody, and I don't know how to make this happen, and it's my first film out of film school. Would you produce it? Smart guy. Smart guy. Go straight to the top. And so um, I said yes, because... From my perspective, you know, I mean, the storyline, it's about uh, a a man 
confronting his father in later life about abuse when he was a child. So it's quite a, a serious, it's your typical heartwarming New Zealand story, New Zealand short film story. Um, and so I uh, said yes, though. The reason why was uh, because I was like, well, it all goes on IMDb. It might do well. Um, if it gets into some festivals, that's great. In terms of my the work I have to put in, it's not too bad because it's one location, it's all paid for, it's everything's all sorted. I really just need to know the right people and have relationships with them that they might want to come work on this thing for cheap or free. Uh, and uh, so I got I gathered up a, a posse of amazing filmmakers and we went out and shot this thing last weekend. Um, and now the jury's out to see you know what it's going to be like. Um, so yeah, that, that that happened. But I did have to hold auditions where I was playing, I was reading across from these actors that were auditioning. And the actors that were auditioning were like little eight-year-old boys. And I was playing a pedophile, um, sort of yelling at them. Uh, so I hadn't really thought of that when I agreed to it. You know, when I agreed to it, I kind of didn't really <laughs> think that I was going to have to do anything mm-hmm. like that. And then it quickly became a, sort of clear that, well, so obviously anyone's going to run the auditions it should be me i've done it before this guy doesn't really know that much about it i know the people i know the process and you know it just makes sense right so next thing you know i'm reading these lines across from these children uh and shaking them by the shoulders in front of their parents um and just thinking what the fuck am i doing with my fucking life that's great that's a great story it's funny yeah um well the so shoot the who, shoot the shoot went who's doing well. the editing? Um, well, I'm encouraging the director to do it because there's no money for mm. for for an editor, and so I don't want to go through this whole process of spending. Say you rummage up a thousand dollars and give it to somebody, and then but they don't get the whole thing done, you know, or or there's a whole bunch of back and forth, or they agree to do it for free. A thousand bucks would be alright, but if they do it for free, you know, they want to do it for free, and then it just drags on. So if he doesn't know somebody that can do it, I don't really know somebody that can that yeah. would want to work, and I don't want to call in big favors, you know, for 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 this particular sort of project of somebody else's. Uh, I'd rather save it for a Pigville project, and so it's like, well, what do you? What do you do there? Mm. Um, so I'm encouraging him to edit it because he's gonna he knows the story. He wants to do it that way anyway. And then we can always pass it along to somebody after he's put it together and kind of get like a second set of eyes on it and that type of thing. Mm. Yeah. I'll give it to you, Guy. You'd love to edit it, wouldn't you? Just add that to your editing list. Yeah, I'm just trying to retire from uh, editing. Yeah. But they keep, it's like the mob. It's like the godfather, right? Just when I think that I've got it out, yeah. they pull me back in. Yeah. So I'm actually just about to start an editing odyssey for the next three weeks on Emmy the Vegan, um, so uh, yes. which is which is a, an update that we didn't really talk about is that yeah Emmy the Vegan we need to uh, is fi- is finally I mean it's had it's had a bunch of work done shout out Ben Fowler fifty one fifty sixty one sixty listener Ben Fowler who put in a bunch of work on the edit on Emmy the Vegan guy is now going through shout out to him but if he could have finished it, it would have been a lot nicer no don't be like that. That's uh, he put in a lot of work for very little money. Mm. Put in a lot of work for very lot of very little money. Mm. Um, shout out Ben Fowler, and um, and so uh, and now guys going to finish that off over the next few weeks uh, before Christmas, and hopefully we'll uh, be progressing there. So that's what's happening. But anyway, we've got to go because I got to start here to see. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for listening, and we will see you all next episode. See you later. <laughs>